A crash on Highway 9 sends one man to Denver with flight for life. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. One person was airlifted from a single vehicle crash on Highway 9 north of Silverthorne this afternoon. Colorado State Patrol confirms the call came around 1.35 just outside of Maryland Creek Ranch, where a flight for life chopper landed around 2 p.m. on the road, closing the highway. The male driver was taken to Denver with moderate to serious injuries. An unidentified passenger was taken to St. Anthony's in Frisco with similar injuries. The car crashed into boulders on the side of the road. Cause is under investigation. One entire block of South Breckenridge was on lockdown for three hours last night for a frantic false report of gun violence. Breckenridge PD confirms they received a call at 7.30 p.m. from a self-described suicidal man who claimed to have killed two people at a downtown business. He told authorities he was armed with a pistol, rifle, and pipe bomb and threatened further violence. Authorities ordered a limited evacuation and used a robot to access the business, finding nothing. They made no arrests and declared the 400 block secure around 1130. The initial call is under investigation. Last Tuesday, we reported on local real estate data for May, showing home and condo sales slid 32 to 64 percent countywide as closing price rose 10 to 47 percent compared to last year. Summit Association of Realtors followed up on our report, noting that the million dollar home market is up 11 percent over last year. The upside there? Fewer transactions sold for more cash. COVID-19 brought Summit's tourism economy to a screeching halt, and local business leaders are now asking municipal leaders to foster new, diverse industries. Blair McGarry with Summit Chamber. It's hard for government to sometimes be really nimble, and I think that that's not a problem that we have here in Summit County. McGarry points to the first few weeks of shutdown, when local towns pledged more than $3 million to immediate relief, keeping many businesses afloat. Now, startup experts say Summit could take notes from Montrose, where the city built an incentives package that attracted a promising but untested outdoors company, Geyser Systems. City official Chelsea Rosti. There's this no man's land between when a business leaves an accelerator and then try to go to market. There's like this lack of money, lack of support. The city pledged $200,000 through a loan and Geyser promised growth. Up to 100 jobs for locals, guaranteed distribution and branded marketing made in Montrose. The counselors who were really supportive of this were like, well, if we're not going to take the risk, then who is? You know, we believe in the viability of this business. It's not going to be the same for every business, but this one already has a purchase order from REI. Rosti says previous public-private partnerships focused on infrastructure, like road and sidewalk upgrades, much like benefits from the Vail Health Project happening now in Dillon. But that is not what guys are needed. The incentives that we had to offer wouldn't help them in that moment. What they really needed was cash. The deal was signed in February, and Geyser debuts its portable, heated backcountry shower in coming weeks at REI locations nationwide. Colorado's police reform bill promises sweeping change by 2023, starting with use of force like a ban on chokeholds and a new system for weeding out bad cops. Summit Sheriff Jamie Fitzsimons. This just brings a little more focus on these requirements for not passing around bad apples. Look, nobody wants a bad apple. Nobody wants a bad cop. Local defense attorney Daniel Garcia says it is a good start, but argues overstuffed police budgets are rampant. People need to start paying attention to their budget and how bloated police budgets are. Like they're astronomically more than what we provide for our teachers, for education, for mental health services, for everything else. Summit Sheriff has a budget of nearly $5.6 million this year, compared to $97.9 million for Summit School District, including a cross-the-board pay raise approved in January. Starting pay for teachers is $43,350. Deputies make $45,000 to $50,000 to start. Fitzsimons argues the answer is not defunding, but smarter funding. The national conversation you're hearing, the national narrative about police and police brutality, that is not happening here in Summit County. You know, one more time, it's this unicorn here, and it's because we all believe in leadership. We all believe in training. You know, the two foundations of, you know, if you do those right, then this bill isn't an issue. The sheriff points to programs like the countywide mental health response team, a first of its kind in the high country, Garcia points to jail reform that came only after a $3.5 million negligence lawsuit in 2013. So when I okay. say defund the police, I mean it literally. I mean taking money away from them and uh, helping people out. Fitzsimons was not sheriff in 2013. He took office in 2016 and introduced round-the-clock jail surveillance soon after. 
and in local sports. Brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency. Today is opening day of the Summit Mountain Challenge Town Series COVID edition with a Strava-based mountain bike time trial on the Frisco Peninsula. You've got two days, today and tomorrow, to ride that route starting right now. The course is marked with yellow arrows. If you are not racing this week, please consider an alternate route. It will get busy. Phil Lindemann, Crystal 93 News.